Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a Group 24 size 12 volt 100 amp hour battery from Cycling Bat. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. All right, when you first open it up, you will see that you get two sets of post bolts. One, one set is very long and the other is very short. It looks like the short ones are about a half inch and the long ones looks to be about an inch and a half. So it gives you two sets. Uh, so that way, if you have multiple conductors, you have a different set that will fit them. All right, a very good sized piece of styrofoam to protect the battery. All right, here's the battery. And on the side is a little packet with a product manual inside. All right, well, I have reviewed uh, Cyclone bat batteries before. I reviewed a couple of minis. And I do remember those. Um, they could pack a punch. I could not get those things to shut off, no matter how much amperage I put into them. Uh, so we're going to kind of see what this Group 24 can do. Uh, the difference between those and this Group 24 is apparently the size. And also that this is a smart version of uh, this cycling bat battery. Uh, on the back, it does show that there is uh, there are QR codes to download to your Apple or Android device, and it also does have the uh, charging and discharging information on the back of the battery. So that's always nice. It says the max charge voltage is 14.4, which is uh, right where you want to be for lithium iron phosphate batteries. It also says that you can do uh, four in parallel and four in series. So you can actually make up a 48 volt of uh, 400 amp hour battery if you were to combine 16 of these batteries together. Uh, the maximum continuous charge and discharge currents are 100 amps. And it does say the peak discharge current is 130 amps for 10 seconds and 330 amps for 5 seconds. So we'll be testing that later. It also says it has low temperature charging protection and it also has low temperature discharging protection. The low temperature charging protection is anything under 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. And the low temperature discharging protection is anything under negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius. All right, the first thing you should do when you receive your battery is check the voltage. All right, and this cycling bat battery is right at 13.2 volts. That is exactly where we want it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this thing up to 100% and then I'm going to do a discharge test just to make sure we're getting the 100 amp hours that we paid for. So when I find out that information, I'll be right back. All right, well, the capacity test is done for this cycling bat battery, and I believe it got right around 104 amps of capacity. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and download the app that comes with this battery. And I'll go ahead and show you step-by-step -step on how to do it. You can either look in the manual and find the QR code in the manual, or, or there is also a QR code on the back of the battery, which is nice. But we'll go ahead and use the one that's in the manual. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull up our QR code reader and do, for me, it's gonna be Android. And it takes us right to the Google Play Cycling Bat app. So we'll hit install. All right, installation is complete, so we'll go ahead and hit open. And it says, allow Cycling Bat to find, connect to, or determine the relative position of nearby devices. You will want to allow that and allow it to use it while using the app. Okay, and now here is my list of all of the batteries that I can connect to. There's nothing on this battery that kind of indicates that the name of the battery. So let's just go ahead and click on the first one. Nope, that wasn't it. So we'll click on the second one. All right, and then we'll go ahead and click on dashboard. And that is it. And I had just pulled this battery off the charger, so it, so it does show a voltage of 13.9 volts. Uh, the, the current right now is zero because there's nothing connected, and so the power is zero as well. Um, it shows that it's had two cycles and that the battery is at currently a 100% state of charge. It does say that the amp hours is 100 out of 100, even though the real capacity is like 104, at least for this battery. Battery health is 100%. Uh, charging and discharging is turned on. Let's click on cells. All right, you can actually see each individual cell. So they're all looking uh, fairly decent. And the MOSFET temperature is 18.7 degrees Celsius. 
or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we click about, there is a history, advanced setting, where you need to confirm it with a password, which I don't know. There's an email address and a privacy policy. You can also change the language uh, to whatever you prefer. So we'll go ahead and use this app while we're doing our high amperage testing just to see how accurate it is. All right, as you can see behind me, um, I have the Cyclone Bat battery all connected to a 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MX Moonfree. I want to say that uh, we can do 100 amps continuous. So we're going to go ahead and run that for like five minutes just to make sure everything's fine. Got my timer right here. And then we're going to go ahead and bump it up to about 160 amps, I think. Uh, because after 130 amps, it should only run for about 10 seconds before it shuts off. And then it also says that it can do uh, 200. It can also do... Uh, the peak current to 330 amps for five seconds before it cuts off. So I would kind of like to test those to see if those are actually accurate. And I also want to load up the app and see how accurate that is during this test as well. All right, I'll go ahead and put the app on the screen and let's go ahead and begin the test. Well, actually, what's, let's compare the app and what the, the, uh, uh, the standby of this, uh, of this setup is right now. Uh, right now, it shows that our voltage is uh, 13.64, and on the app, it actually sh it shows 13.6, so that is very accurate, that's good. And it does so show the current is right around 0.9 amps, uh, or it kind of goes between 0.9 and 1 amp, which is good because on our amp clamp, we actually have uh, 1.05 amps, so that is very accurate so far in the app. But let's go ahead and turn on the uh, the heat gun, and that should give us our 100 amps of discharge, and we'll start our timer and let things start cooking. All right, heat gun is on, timer is set. Uh, it looks like we are pulling right around 101 amps from the amp clamp and it shows 98.8 amps from the uh from the app and also our meter shows 12.73 volts at the battery and the uh the app does show 12.8 volts so it looks like the app is a little higher on the voltage and a little lower on the amperage okay well i'm going to go ahead and let this run for five minutes and i'll be right back all right, so it's been uh, five minutes and 15 seconds and this battery has performed flawlessly. And if we go ahead and bring up the app, uh, you can see that it is still pulling 100 amps at 12.7 volts. And we are showing 12.54 volts and 103 amps. So actually the power is right around the same if you multiply those out, I believe. Uh, and if we go to the cells, we can see the temperature. The temperature is 21.1 degrees Celsius or 7 degrees Fahrenheit. So the, in so the inside of the battery is still nice and cool. So let's go ahead and juice this up some more by uh, introducing 600 more watts to see what happens. And we'll do it at 6 minutes and 20 seconds. There we go, it started. Let me switch this back over to the dashboard. You can see that we are pulling 161 amps. And after 10 seconds exactly, it shut off. That is perfect. I love that. And then right at around 30 seconds, uh, the battery clicked back on and it's ready to go again without me having to do anything. So, so far, I like those results. They're perfect. So I would like to try to see if I can actually perform a, uh, you know, a 300 amp test to see if I can get it to trigger and turn off in five seconds. And in order to do that, it will be, I'll be, I'm basically just going to turn on everything. I'll probably shoot it up to like 400 amps or something, but let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and turn on the app so you can see that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and turn on our heat gun. That should give us our 100 amps right there. Now you can see on the app, there's 100 amps. Um, and then what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the new wave and I brought out this Elite Gourmet, which gives us another thousand watts. I'm just gonna turn those on full blast um, and that will give us way over 330 amps. And I'll do it at eight minutes and 40 seconds. And go. There we go. Our amperage is, oh, come on, 200 and 305. Oh, and it shut off in 10 seconds. Darn it, and it didn't get all the way up. Okay, I, uh, now I've introduced this, uh, this Griddler Junior, which gives us 1100 watts. Uh, I'm just trying to get as much amperage as possible, as fast as possible. So uh, let's go ahead and do this again. Here is my 100 amps. Oh, actually, yeah, let's introduce this. And then I'm gonna introduce the 100 amps and this and this at the same time. Hopefully we can get up to 330 before the 10 seconds. So we'll do it at 10 minutes and 20 seconds. And go. Wow, that shut off immediately. I, I didn't even see what the amperage got to. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. And now I've got my amp clamp set to uh, capture the highest amperage. That's on. And now. Yep, uh, wow. That reached 361 amps and it shut off immediately. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to see about that five second rule, but it's working perfect in my opinion. 10 seconds, perfect, it clicks back on. If you go way over amperage, uh, it seems like it takes a lot longer for this thing to, tr to come back to life. So with that high amperage test, I am very impressed. All right, I think I've got this battery finally able to crack open, hopefully. I've got the lid partially off because I really want to see what's going on on the inside. So let's see if I can peel this off. <sighs> there we go. All right, and here's what we have on the inside. It looks like we have a couple of eight gauge uh, cables going to the negative and uh, two more eight gauge going to the cells, to the negative, uh, the B negative. Uh, it looks like we have for the positive, it is six gauge for the positive. Let's see, we have our balance leads right here and our, uh, and uh, I'm guessing these are the temperature sensors, but I'm not positive. Oh, and the Bluetooth is built in. So that's why there's no like Bluetooth sensor. The Bluetooth is built into the BMS. You can actually see the light flashing underneath right there. There you go. You can see it flashing. So that's why we couldn't find a Bluetooth sensor. So yeah, here is the uh, temperature sensors and the, uh, the balance leads right here. Uh, there's a little bit of glue on those, but there is no glue on the connections to the BMS, to the cells or to the uh, negative. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull this out of the case completely. All right, well, I got this out of the case, but unfortunately I don't, it's got a lot of this fiberboard on here and um, I really can't get to the cells. You can see down there, I love, I like how the bus bars, uh, they have that, uh, that hump in them. So they're not just flat bus bars. They actually have uh, a little bit of space for uh, expansion and contraction of the cells themselves. So that's always a good thing. So over time, as these expand out, uh, the, the bus bars will be able to expand with them. Yeah, and it is, I mean, it's got this, uh, it, it's got this fiberboard, it's got this padding. Um, and then I believe these cells are also, there's also a case. There's also a, a, this black case around the cells as well. So these, these are very, very well, uh, well protected. But everything I see about the inside of this battery, everything looks very clean. Everything is nice and tight. Nothing moves around. And I also like the fact that there's just fiberboard all over this thing. All right, now that I got this cycling bat battery all fixed up again with my very secure tape job, 
The last test we gotta do is the low charging temperature protection test. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a uh, 12 volt cooler and we're gonna leave it in there for oh, probably about 18 hours and we'll come back and see if it charges. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, well, this cycling bat battery has been in this ice code 12 volt refrigerator for the past 24 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and see if it will charge. Um, if you look at the app, you can see that the app shows that it is actually negative 1.5 degrees Celsius or 29 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I did have this cooler set to 26 degrees Fahrenheit just to make sure it would get below that 32 degree threshold. So let's go ahead and um, unzip this, take it to my bench, and uh, see if it charges. Okay, we're gonna see if this charges. We're gonna be using this Litime 20 amp charger. Uh, you can see that it's flashing green right now. That means it's on standby. Uh, when I connect the positive terminal, uh, it will go to a solid red, means that, meaning that it will start charging for like one or two seconds, hopefully. And then it will go from a solid red to a solid green. Basically, the battery is telling the charger to stop charging. So let's go ahead and try it. Here we go. Turns red. And it just shut off. It actually took a little bit longer than I liked. I think it took about five seconds, but it does work. So uh, this does in fact have low temperature charging protection. All right, so what do I think of the Cyclone Bat uh, Group 24 size 12 volt 100 amp hour smart battery? Uh, well, I mean, it pulled off everything that I wanted it to. It, uh, it gave us, uh, I think, 104 amp hours. Uh, it, it passed the uh, high amperage protection tests uh, perfectly. Uh, that was great, I loved that. When it came to the low temperature charging protection, uh, it passed that. Uh, it lasted a little bit longer than I like, but five seconds, I believe, is still uh, fine. Uh, one to two is preferable to me, but five seconds I think will be just fine. When we opened it up and looked at the insides, it looked like everything was pretty clean. All the wiring was good, the connections were solid. So I don't have any, any complaints about that uh, at all whatsoever as well. So if you have any questions about the Cycling Bat battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you wanna look further into it. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.